servant of the Most High. Beloved one, let us now speak of you as a servant, which you are, the servant of the Most High. The servant of the Most High is the beloved child of the Father. And when you accept that you are the servant of the Father, you abide in the most wonderful place of remembrance. Now you say, Well, Joshua, I don't want to be anyone's servant. I want to be my own person. And you are your own person, claiming your own personality. But in the remembrance of who you are as the Holy Child, it behooves you now to remember that you are the servant of the Most High, and to examine most deeply what it means to be the servant. Not to take just the world view of what a servant is, and to say that this is a menial position, but to claim once again the true meaning value, worth of the servant, and to feel quite worthy in that remembrance. What does it mean to be servant in the truth? It means to be there for the brothers and sisters to serve, yes, and it means much more. It means to be humble. It means not to put yourself above that which you serve, but to know the true meaning from whence you have come, the servant of the Most High. To be humble, to be teachable, to be open, receptive, to say as the child that you are, Here I am, Father, show me, teach me, guide me. It means to ask in every moment, What is thy will? That is what the servant does, setting aside any thoughts of grandeur of self, small self with a small s, and looking under the grander whole which you are. To be servant means to have humility, a true humility, not a false humility which the world so often teaches, where you put yourself down, saying, I am the lowest of the lowliest worms. I am not even worthy to crawl in the dust. I have sinned. I have sinned so greatly that no one can look upon me. Many lifetimes you have lived with such a feeling, and you have tried to cover it up. You have made a false bravado, a false persona, and you have said, Here, believe this persona, please. I don't want you to know who I am inside. Because if you truly knew me as I think I know me, you would not like me, you would not love me, you would not accept me. To be the servant, the true servant, means to be humble and to abide in humility, to look to the source and to be in great awe and wonderment of the source of your being. For when you begin to catch a glimpse of who you truly are and from whence you have come, and you are catching that glimpse even in this day and time, you find yourself in great wonderment that you, whom you have thought to be such a tiny little being, are one with such an awesome power, a power unknown to the world and beyond the world. And you stand in true humility and you say, I will serve that presence. I will serve the source of my being. I will serve that source with great joy and reverence. To be a servant means that you will have discipline about yourself, as a servant must know discipline. Discipline is great rewards. You are finding even now a necessity for some discipline. You have tried it otherwise, and you have felt like you wandered through a day, a week, an experience, and were battered here and there, tossed as a small ping-pong ball upon the waves of the ocean, and it did not feel good. But as you will accept the discipline of choosing, choosing anew as often as is necessary, to remember once again the Father's love, remembering once again whom you serve and what you serve, you will begin to know great joy. The servant knows obedience. True obedience means to listen for the voice of the Father, to listen for the still, small voice within, the voice which is always available to you in place of peace which comes with a deep breath. The place of peace is your sacred place within the very heart of you, and know you as the awakening Christ. You, as the willing servant of the Most High, are desiring to hear the voice of the Father, asking, What is your will? Not the will of the world, I have tried that, and it has brought me no lasting pleasure. But what is your will? I will be obedient to that will. I want to serve you, Father. I want to serve the highest. For you have already served the lowest, and you know how that feels. Serving that voice of the world brings you in time to the lowest point of perceived unworthiness, and yet the still, small voice will call to you to come up higher, to come home, to release all the heavy burdens of judgment, all the world thinking, and to come home. And you have said, Yes, 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 I will. The servant is obedient to the master's call. The true servant has trust, for the servant may not see, oftentimes does not see what the master sees. The servant may not see the whole vision, and the servant has to trust. You ask of the Father, Speak to me, guide me. Tell me where to go. Tell me what to say. I will listen. And then the Father, through the still, small voice, suggests to you, and you must trust. 
for often at that point you do not see the whole picture. You cannot see where each stepping stone is going to lead you, but you trust. The true servant trusts and has faith, and will take the step in service even though he or she may not know and does not see the whole holiness of the vision. That is obedience, trusting, surrendering, and having faith. Now, what does it mean to be the servant of the Most High? To be the servant of the Most High means to choose in every moment to look upon even that which you do not understand from the place of high perspective. To look upon it and to say, even if I don't understand what is going on here, I will trust that there is divine wisdom at work. I will believe in the best. For you who have chosen to be in the world, but not of it, it remains for you to see yet what the world is presenting. Not to cover the eyes and to say it does not exist. That is like standing in a flower garden with a blindfold on, saying that the flowers do not exist and yet you smell them, or the natural fertilizer which the gardener has used. Recognizing that you are in the world, but not of it, means to look upon whatever is happening and to know that there is good in it, no matter how the appearance looks to the world's ego. Begin to choose to look upon everything with new eyes and to look for the good in everything. Not to deny that whatever is happening can be seen as bad or heavy or tragic according to world belief, but to sit with it and to own it as your creation. Now that's a stretch for the ego, and then to look beyond understanding, to look beyond appearances and to say, where is the good in this? Start with whatever you can see, even a small, small bit of good or divine purpose. Write it down so you will not forget it. Make a note of it. And the next time it comes to mind, think about the situation again and ask to see something more about it, and how it is a divine creation, for indeed it is, and how it is serving the awakening. For every experience which you bring forth serves the divine purpose of the awakening. Everything is holy. Look for the holiness. Bless all the good that you can see in it. Write it down. And as you will bless it, as you will acknowledge what wisdom you see, more will be shown unto you, and you will find yourself living more and more in the place of the Most High. Now I speak this to you with great earnestness because you are going to have many opportunities to look upon occurrences and either judge them to be very tragic or to behold them as holy, part of the divine creation of the Holy Child. You will remember my words. You will acknowledge who you are, the power that you are, the true Christ power. And you will remember how to serve the Most High, to come from the place of Most High understanding and love. Choose you in every day, in conscious awareness whom you will serve. Be aware of whom you are serving, the voice of the world or the voice of the Father. Choose you in every day to be the servant of the Most High. So be it.